Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. In the past few months, food prices have been on the rise across Nigeria, but the situation became more complex in the past two months. The upward trend in the prices of these staples, as well as other products, has weakened the purchasing power of many citizens, making it very difficult for many households in the country to afford daily meals. Tonight, let's hear from the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Senator Abubakar Kerry, on what the federal government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, is doing to boost agri-production across the country. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Right. So it became very important for us to speak with you so Nigerians can understand, I mean, grasp uh, exactly what is happening and what the federal government is doing to address this situation. So as we speak, what is government doing to ensure food availability and affordability? Well, let me first um, start by saying that um, uh, the current crisis that we have is uh, uh, something of uh, critical concern to the president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and the government of federal government of Nigeria. Um, all hands are on deck, really, to see the situation uh, controlled. What we have actually did not start today. Let me go back uh, memory lane and uh, take us back to just a few years ago, maybe four years ago, when uh, COVID uh, reared its head and impacted on food supply all over the world, actually. And then uh, shortly thereafter, in 2021 and 2022, we had the, uh, the disaster, the flood disaster that happened across the country. Uh, that also impacted on agriculture and production. And uh, thereafter, we also had the issue of uh, a policy that, um, you know, like uh, had cash in short supply, the Naira redesign between uh, September, October of 2022 and also up to February, March of 2023. Uh, that um, had uh, farmers had to crash their prices and uh, they didn't make a lot of money and some didn't even have money to cultivate in the 2023 wet season. So that brought about uh, a s supply deficit in terms of uh, agricultural commodities and produce. Now, what all this is playing is the uh, issue of supply and demand. We have always had... Um, uh, a gap uh, of demand and supply between demand and supply we in, in most of our commodities. Uh, but what we have seen today was as a result of uh, acute and a culmination of several factors over the period of time. Uh, usually the short supply of food Portents is said it's a cyclical issue that comes around May and June just before the cultivation for the wet season. However, we see this happening uh, as early as February and March. So we assume there are several factors that have contributed to that. One of which I would say that um, we are faced with affordability issue, not availability as it is. Uh, you could see that there were a lot of uh, hoarding that went on uh, during the time. Even now, as I speak, some of the, uh, uh, the raid on some of the warehouses, especially in Kano that was made, uh, contributed to some of the pr pr commodities uh, prices coming down considerably. Um, at, at the same time, there's some undocumented export. Export in itself is good. I mean, it's good for the country. I mean, this even uh, what we have today is uh, good for us so that we can export commodities. But we have to be self-sufficient first. And also, if there are any exports that will be done, government should derive benefits from it. So we are challenged today by issue of um, land being uh, decreasing in terms of... Uh, uh, climate change, in terms of desertification, in terms of flooding, uh, where also population is growing, where we grow by at least uh, 7 million every 
every year. So population growth is another uh, thing where it, uh, habitation has uh, increased uh, land use for habitation and decreased land use for cultivation. In addition, also, um, we have the issue of uh, insecurity and terror uh, in terms of um, well, you know, kidnapping and banditry, of which uh, Mr. President has already initiated steps to combat these issues. Uh, as I'm speaking to you, the issue of agro-rangers, forest, forest rangers, and also the armed forces have been mandated to take care of uh, the situation. And uh, I think we have seen a lot of, um, uh, 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 a lot of uh, successes in that. Just the other day, uh, the governor of Katsina had informed us that uh, the, the people have gone back to farm. At least about 70% have been recovered in Katsina. So we are looking at those successes, and we intend to uh, assiduously impact on the dry season cultivation uh, so that we can improve on our production and also on the wet season. All right. Uh, uh, when you appeared before the Joint Committee of the National Assembly to defend your ministry's budget last December, you told the lawmakers that uh, the database of farmers benefiting from agricultural intervention programs of the federal government is corrupt and politicized. I mean, meaning the database consists of names of politicians who are not even farmers. What have you done to clean up the data? Well, in the interim, um, what we have done is uh, we have submitted these data that we have with us. Uh, we collaborated with state governors. We invited state governors to um, come and express interest in all of our interventions. And um, they have, uh, we initiated a committee made up of uh, officials of the state government. In fact, we have ask the governors to be the chairman of those committees or their representatives. And uh, a long list of committee members, starting from the local level, uh, traditional leaders, uh, community leaders, uh, commodity associations, to look at those um, data and uh, clean it up and present to us. This is an interim measure that we have done. But uh, as soon as we're over with the dry season intervention, we intend to holistically uh, come up with a farmer data that is reliable, that will take care of, uh, you, you know, other biometrics, uh, NIN, BVN, and also geoposition, geo, geolocations of the farm. We have done a situation where you first and foremost locate the farm, and then you know who is on that farm. You don't identify the farmer and then later go and identify the farm. First and foremost, identify the farmland and then you, 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 you locate that farmer on that farmland. So we are going to do a very uh, holistic um, program to identify not only the farmer, but all stake stakeholders in the um, agricultural space, which also includes the agro-dealers the, um, and the commodity traders and, and, and so on and so forth. So we have, and even extension workers, we are going to have a complete data for um, those uh, stakeholders in the agricultural space. All right, so when you, when you clean up this data, how do you uh, intend to identify original farmers and how do you intend to reach them? Well, like I said, the, um, the program is going to be similar to what a census is. Uh, today we have so many data uh, with... Um, that have captured uh, indiv individuals and some have uh, uh, professions as farmers. Uh, you look at the uh, one of such data is the, send the, the one at the National Population Commission. Uh, NIMSI also has data. Uh, INEC has data. Uh, we're trying to look at those ones and see where those the farmers do exist. And then we go down to the grassroots. We go, like I said, identify the farmlands first, and then you attach the farmers. You find out who the farmers are on that particular land. So if you're if you a farmer, you don't have a land, so you are not a farmer, really. You must have a land. So we identify the lands first, and then we, we, we register the farmers. All right, uh, that's fair enough. 
Uh, Nigeria has 15 wheat producing states. Uh, let me ask, what is government doing to stimulate wheat production? Well, um, let, me, let me say this. Um, we have launched uh, the dry season farming in, uh, uh, I think I should, uh, 5th of December, when we did the phase one of the wheat. Um, we have uh, intervened in cultivating 120,000 hectares of wheat in which we achieved 118,000. So that's about 97%. Um, as I'm talking to you, uh, the wheat is in uh, the last stages of uh, growth and any moment from now, uh, in the next two, three weeks, a uh, bountiful harvest of wheat will be, will be available. And uh, we have been receiving a lot of reports from 15 states that have uh, participated, the wheat growing states. And uh, hopefully we're, we're going to have a bountiful harvest for the wheat. For the second phase, we are um, in, intervening in the support for 500,000 farmers uh, of half a hectare each, which is 250,000 hectares for rice, and uh, 55,000 hectares, uh, which is uh, 110,000 farmers for maize, and uh, cassava is 35,000 hectares. Uh, we have a program uh, with the African Development Bank, which is called the Nigerian Agricultural Growth Scheme. Uh, that will be 150,000, but we, there are certain shortcomings or gaps in that program that the federal government is going to intervene to cover those gaps, and at the same time, give an additional 100,000 hectares for the rice. And so also applies to the maize is 30,000 for the nags and then uh, 15,000 for 25,000, sorry, for federal government's intervention. So these are issues that we're looking at that we can at least in the next three, four months, we can have uh, direct intervention from the, our, our programs uh, a, a, a production of a million tons of paddy rice in the next three, four months, and also about 150,000 tons of maize uh, in the next three, four months. So these are, sh these are shortcomings, these are uh, short-term measures that we have done. And this is, let me say, this is direct intervention by the federal government. We have other farmers that are without the intervention are on their own cultivating the rice during this season and we expect to get a total of about two and a half million to three million tons of rice in the dry season. All right, now that uh, you've talked about the short-term measures, can you talk to me about the long-term measures in addressing uh, this critical situation? Well, one, I will say um, the one that is uh, very critical and key um, that uh, just uh, two days ago, uh, Mr. President uh, graciously approved the relocation of NALDA, which is the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, back to the Minister, Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. The, one of the major challenges that we have today is land preparation. Uh, and that, with uh, that move, we are uh, uh, excited to see that NALDA has come back because without land, like I said earlier during this uh, program, we have a shrinking land. The land mass for agriculture is shrinking. And uh, we have to assiduously expand it because right now we have arable land of about 70 million hectares, but we are only cultivating about half of that simply because of either growth, uh, insecurity, flooding, habitation, and, and what have you, and even access. Uh, some places are, are beyond the reach of uh, uh, people in terms of uh, access, in terms of roads, and, and what have you. So we, with, the, with the movement of uh, NALDA to the Federal Ministry, I think uh, we're going to have uh, something that we, 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 we look forward to so that we can open up more lands. Uh, then in addition also, um, 
when you look at uh, uh, the issue that we are doing now, the incentivizing farmers to go into dry season, we want to, at the end of the day, have three cycles of farming in some communities. And uh, that is very, very achievable. So we are doing that and uh, uh, going forward, we also have uh, the mechanization policy of Mr. President where uh, we have uh, two major policies that uh, has been uh, uh, kick-started. We signed an MOU with John Deere Tractor. Uh, they're in fact coming on the 6th of March for the second phase of negotiations on uh, where they would supply 2,000 tractors per annum for the next five years, making a total of 10,000 tractors. In addition, we also have the GIP, the Green, Init Green Imperative uh, Program, which is uh, anchored by the Brazilian government with the support of the Deutsche Bank, uh, which intends to uh, spend about a billion dollars on mechanization and tractorization program where we will have uh, service centers across the nation in all the seven, 774 local governments of Nigeria. We'll have service centers not only for tractorization but also for extension services, for aggregation, for storage, uh, and what have you. So these are policies that uh, we have kick-started and uh, will be rolled out very soon. Then in addition, there's this uh, special agro-processing zones, the SAPZ. Currently, we have uh, seven states in, uh, with uh, FCT participating, uh, but we have received expression of interest from all the remaining states. And that is another, uh, uh, another $1.5 billion program where we're going to create special agro-processing zones in peri-urban areas, not in the capitals, but in the peri-urban areas, where you will have production, uh, aggregation, and processing. Uh, it's about time we move uh, a step further where we encourage uh, our raw materials, raw commodities being processed so that we can add value to it and uh, can be competitive in the world market. Right, so we'll come back to these long-term measures. Uh, there are a lot, and it's important that we talk about them. Let's stay on the short-term measures. Uh, we know the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is in the final stages of releasing 42,000 metric tons of assorted grains to support the vulnerable population across the country. You would agree with me, Honorable Minister, that we have always had issues with getting these uh, interventionist measures to those who really need them. Now that there is no... Uh, data, so to say, what would happen or how will governments make sure these measures uh, get to those who really need them? Well, uh, the data that we're talking about, data of farmers, these 42,000 metric tons you're talking about, we have them in our, in our silos, in our storages. Uh, bagging has commenced uh, and in advanced stages. Um, and uh, we have engaged both from our ministry the Office of the National Security Advisor, and also NEMA, who have an index of vulnerability population around the country. Uh, we have drawn up the committees that will be responsible for distribution to the vulnerable Nigerians. And as I'm talking to you, as soon as um, this weekend, we shall roll out the first set of uh, the, the distribution packages. We have maize, um, sorghum, millet, and gari for distribution, making up a total of 42,000 uh, metric tons, which is about 1,400 trailers. So these will be flagged up and they will be under severe uh, scrutiny and watch, uh, watchful. Uh, the committees are made up of security agencies, uh, CSOs, religious leaders, uh, the media will also be invited in, in, the in the committees at the various levels, whether it is state and uh, also local government. Uh, in addition, also, Mr. President has also mandated the committee to also look into assisting uh, secondary schools because they're also vulnerable uh, 
uh, population. So about a certain percentage, 3% will go to secondary uh, schools. So we are going to roll out in the next couple of days and uh, I assure you that this will be very transparent and it will be with utmost sincerity because of the situation that we find ourselves and I think the direction and the leadership that was given to us by Mr. President, uh, we will not leave any stone unturned. Mm. All right. Uh, you may have said this in passing, but I want us to go back to it for better clarity so Nigerians can really understand uh, the purpose of this conversation. And that's the federal government's efforts to boost dry season farming under the National Agricultural Growth Scheme Agro Pocket Project. Uh, I know the first phase of the dry season farming was launched in November 2023. So when will Nigeria start seeing results? Well, like I just mentioned, the one that we launched uh, in, in actually it was first week of December. Uh, and um, it will, like I said, cult uh, harvest will be around uh, second to third week of March. So what you're looking at is, uh, like I said, even at the time, it's a period of uh, anywhere between 100 uh, days to 120 days. So that first set we will see in, in March. And the one that we're doing, uh, we're going to launch in the first week of March. And we'll see the effects by May uh, and June in some places. So I believe, like I said, we will have a total of about... Um, over 1.5 million tons just on direct government intervention. Now, uh, let me talk about the program itself. The, the National Agricultural uh, Growth Scheme, the NAGS, is made up of uh, four commodities, wheat, rice, maize, and cassava. Um, and also so in the dry season. And also we have sorghum and soya and uh, millet in the, in, the, in the wet season. But in the dry season, the concentration here is that uh, we have a lot of potential in uh, doing irrigation farming with wheat and, uh, and rice. Maize in some certain areas, but is not widely uh, cultivated during the dry season. But for um, the wheat that we did uh, a few months ago, we notice that the program that gives 50%, like I said before, 50% of subsidy of all inputs, um, we calculated the, at that time, the subsidy, the inputs per hectare was valued at 360,000 naira. The, the inputs are seeds, seeds are free, whether it is wheat or rice or maize or cassava, these seeds are provided free of charge by government. Then um, we have fertilizer and uh, agrochemicals, that is the pesticides and the herbicides. Uh, the, 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 the three items that I just mentioned were valued at 360000 And the farmer was expected to pay 50% of that, and he gets 100% of those items. 50% uh, of that translated to 180000 uh, what we saw at that time was uh, because, of course, like I said, several factors have impacted on the fund financing of farmers that uh, they couldn't come up precisely with that. So during that program, there was a lot of advantages that were taken on the farmers. So um, this time around, we looked at that challenge and we said instead of giving one hectare to every farmer for the rice, let us double the number of farmers and then reduce the size of the land that we're going to intervene for the farmers. That is to bring down the, 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 um, the size of the farmer to, uh, to half a hectare for each farmer. Now, in the wheat, you require 10 bags of fertilizer per hectare. In the rice, we require less fertilization, six bags of fertilizer per hectare. So for half a hectare, the farmer will receive three bags of fertilizer. Now, with the NAGS, NAGS provides for 50% subsidy, which is to say that the farmer will now pay for one and a half bags, and then government will pay under the NAGS program one and a half bags of fertilizer, and half of the 
a herbicide and also pesticide. So we came up with the idea that to incentivize and also promote dry season farming, uh, Mr. President has graciously given us additional funds to now intervene. With the intervention funds, we are now asking the farmer, we are adding the one and a half that the farmer is supposed to pay. We are also off taking one bag and asking the farmer to pay for half a bag. When we made the calculation of half a bag about two weeks ago, it was 16,000 naira, and we are, still insist we are still sticking to that despite the fact that the fertilizer has gone a bit, uh, about 10% in price, uh, but we're working on uh, the major suppliers of the fertilizer, that uh, urea, for instance, Indorama and Dangote fertilizer. They have given us the word that they are going to reduce their prices, but we are still insisting that the farmer should pay that lower price of 16000 So for half a hectare, you see what we are asking for the farmer to pay is 16000 naira. Well, we believe farmers will be able to do that. And that is not the, the, the real the reason that we ask farmers to do that is because so that they can have a stake. Uh, times of when you give uh, uh, inputs free of charge have gone. But the farmer will have a stake when he pays 16000 naira. Not only that, we are also demanding that for every half a hectare, the farmer for the rice is to give us two bags of uh, uh, 75 kilograms each of paddy. That is to make 150 kilograms. So we're going to offtake uh, the support that we're giving and we're going to offtake uh, from the farmers so that it will also go into our reserve. Then for the maize, we are doing the same uh, program we will ask the farmers to pay for 16000 But instead of, uh, because the size of the sacks for maize is 100 kilograms, and, uh, 100 kilo, and then the yield in maize is less than that of the rice. So we're asking maize farmers to give us, to, to, uh, we're receiving one bag of 100 kilograms of maize from the maize farmer. So in a sense, this is how we are trying to incentivize them. And we're also going to provide water pumps to aid them because uh, irrigation farming is, is uh, water-based. Some places have uh, gravity irrigation, some but, uh, have uh, the use of uh, surface water pumps. So um, we're going to incentivize them by providing uh, water pumps. So by and large, that is, I think we have received uh, a lot of enthusiasm. We met this morning with all the stakeholders in this program and they have expressed the desire for all uh, the, the, the farmers' desire that they are willing and ready to participate in this program.